first of all, I want to thank you for taking the time to talk to me today. I also wanted to congratulate you on to the film as well, too, The Sound of Metal. It's been a long time that me and my friends have been watching the production of the film via IMDb, so I'm so happy to see the project finally completed. Me and my friends uh, being a big fan of the director, Derek C. and Franz as well, too, who worked with you on the story of the film. So I guess that leads me to my first question of what was the inspiration for The Sound of Metal and how was it like working with Derek C. and Franz once again onto the story, having previously collaborated with them on Place Beyond the Pines? Well, Derek is, a, you know, I, he's, he's just such a phenomenal filmmaker. He's a dear friend. And, you know, it's a beautiful thing when you, you kind of overlap, you know, with someone and um, find something unexpected. And that's kind of what we're after in this creative game, you know, is, is that. That's kind of this very hard to explain. You could never plan it. It's like the heuristic journey that be, where two things become, you know, greater than the sum of their parts, or at least different than the sum of their parts, or what you would think. And that's how it's, it's been with Derek and and myself when we've uh, had we've spent so much time working together. And you know, interestingly, it was this film that Derek and I spoke about before we wrote and worked on Place Beyond the Pines. Um, this was the the film that we first talked about 13 years ago. And, and Derek was shooting at the time a band called Jucifer and this film called Metalhead. And, you know, he was capturing it himself. He's such a good shooter and he was shooting it on 16 millimeter and it was just the most beautiful um, seed of a movie, like just outstandingly gorgeous and, and lyrical and evocative and it it really was the the dna the essence that this story grew out of so even though derek didn't end up working on the script of this movie per se it was he was and his mind is at the core of this project i and see it as well with the filmmaking as well inside of the film so riz ahmed who stars in the film as ruben takes on the central role as a heavy metal drummer facing severe hearing loss and learning to live with this new condition. What were some of the challenges that Riz faced with the role and what did he bring to the role? Well, both are the same, you know? So the challenges are, are what he brought and the challenges are the gift. And it's also the gift of Riz, you know, the, it's, it's, it's one thing to have talent, you know, talent is a, is an, is important. <laughs> and Riz has that in spades. I mean, he has, he has an instinct and a talent and he's so multi multi-dimensional and sensitive and all of those things that make for a great actor. But the piece of that, that, that is unusual with Riz. And I think it really marks those grade test actors, those next level performances that we've felt in film over the history of film have been marked by those very talented people that are up for a process of vulnerability that is, um, and, a and, a, and a relinquishing of control that, that takes them to another stratosphere where performance can merge with kind of transcendence and actual physical change within the actor himself. That's what's spe so special about, about Riz is that, you know, the challenge for him was the journey for him, the challenge of, of learning the drums, learning ASL, spending months and months and months, shutting off the world around him, uh, not dissecting and intellectualizing, which he's so very good at, but instead uh, creating a physical experience and giving into that and trusting in that and literally on a cellular level building this character and then trusting in that foundation. That's the genius that he found in this process. I think that that leads me into my next question because most films take on the conventional narrative of having a dialogue between a character and another character. But this film in particular relies heavily onto sound design. 
to express the dialogue of the film, but not only that, but to give you the character's state of mind, especially Ruben's state of mind through the sound design. So maybe you can talk about what the sound design and how it plays the most at most importance to the film. Yeah, well, it was this remarkable, you know, opportunity to explore something that we hadn't really ever heard or seen in a movie. And it was an audacious thing to even say, you know, um, but yet that was kind of my conviction going way back is that there was that just that opportunity in this movie to shift um, perspective, to have a, a completely, um, a completely uh, deliberate first person perspective in this movie. That's a grueling thing to write. It's, it takes a real focus to write and to cut, you know, because you can't cut away. You can't, you can't go to this other character. You can't, you don't have that ability. You have to stick there. And in that, in doing that, it, it, is, an, it is by its very nature grueling and potentially um, amazing. And that sound design was so much a part of that because it enabled, it was like an empathy machine. We were able to, to uh, physically go through that journey with Ruben. And, it, but in order to create that, it took a huge amount of experimentation. Um, it was really, a, a pure creative journey, but, but a massive journey. And it took a, a real leap of faith to say, we can do this, we can create something that is sonically different. And that meant trying a lot of things that meant, you know, mics underwater and, and uh, down the throat. A lot of the sounds you're hearing are actually from within Riz himself. And um, it was a very layered project. It had as many tracks as any action film. It just was for a different purpose. It was a massive sound design and ultimately was a 23 week mix, if you can imagine that. And it was just, just ridiculous. But, you know, it was all for that core purpose of empathy. I feel that it works very well with the film and gives the person um, the utmost in the shoes with Ruben's character as he's experiencing the challenges that he is. So I'm gonna remind our listeners that The Sound of Metal is across Canada on Friday, November 20th inside of theaters that are still open. Those are those things that you sit in and yeah. watch with other humans. I don't know if people remember. Regrettably, our theaters are closed here inside of Quebec, so that sucks. But people get a second chance at The Sound of Metal on VOD services Friday, December the 4th. And I cannot recommend this film enough. It's one of my favorite films that I've seen this year that I will probably tell everybody about. So congratulations onto the film again. And we normally end our interviews with a fun question. So what has been one film that you have seen this year, old or new, that you feel that you should recommend to other listeners of our show? Um. What have I seen recently? Oh, let me think, think, think. My head's been in such a uh, cloud. Um, oh, what have I seen? Sanam, what have I seen? Did I tell you? No, we haven't really been talking that much. No, can... wait, you did mention Never, Rarely, Sometimes, Always. Oh, yeah, I did. I, I love that film. I think it was just a, a, a beautiful um, uh, I thought that was a beautiful film, really committed narrative and performance and raw and gorgeous. Well, thank you for taking the time today, Darius. And we wish you all the best of luck with your future projects. And congratulations once again onto the film. Thanks again. I appreciate it. Take care. Thank you. Mm -hmm.